This is a map of Amsterdam. And what you see there is the building called Atlas. And I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but uh, it's Fiscalisten. So anyway, as you can see in the, um, the little uh, canal area, you can see where this building is. And I'm going to show it to you in a better way. Um, it is right by the canal, and it's right in front of the Rijksmuseum, which is the museum where you find most of Rembrandt's work, but also a lot of different classical Dutch paintings. It's a very famous museum. Walking from the museum towards the center centrum of Amsterdam, uh, right about where this arrow ends, is where you can get a very nice view of this Atlas building. That's what I'm going to call it, Atlas building. And this is what I mean. That's the view that I had when I was walking back from the museum. It was a little bit of an overcast day in November, and uh, it was really a very nice uh, image that I saw. It caught my attention, the rhomboid area of the both the building and the reflection of the building as, you know, looking at it from the shape's uh, point of view. As you can see, when I develop the painting, there is really no strong light source because it was an overcast day. And this usually poses a little bit of, a, of an issue because it's always nicer to have very strong shades and light areas. But with this overcast day, I try doing my best uh, to put this into a nice painting, especially focusing on the reflections. In order to do the sketch, I use these uh, the different pencils. These are pencils that I have since I was in elementary school. Uh, they are about 50, 50 years old, and I've taken care of them very well. So as you can see from the left to the right, we go from the one that has more graphite, the 2H, to the one that's a darker one, the 4B. Uh, these are the numbers I had. And for the sketch, I used the H, which is very light for the light positioning of the original sketch. Then I used the 2B, but moved very quickly to the 4B. So uh, the sketch basically is following pretty much what I had been seeing uh, from the photograph reference photo that I took. And the first thing that I focused on was the perspective lines. Uh, I thought it was really important to have the canal wall and also the railing. I debated if I should put the railing or not, but then I decided to put it in because it does give a little bit of a way in so that the eye goes in thanks to the railing and there's a little bit of an S shape going towards the uh, main focus of the painting. Uh, the other thing that was important to me in this uh, particular painting was to get the perspective lines correctly. By looking at the building, you can see that the perspective lines, because of the eyesight where I'm seeing it from, uh, it does provide a very nice perspective and it allows me to, to do this particular building in a better way. You will see later my sketch actually undersized the building. It's very evident from looking at it side by side, but I didn't have it side by side with a photo. Um, that's no excuse, but I did correct it later when I worked on the studio. The important thing for me was the reflection of the building. And of course, I can see right away that, you know, in the reflection, the, the reflection of the turret goes a bit uh, longer than what I had in here. I wanted to show how I prepare the stay weight palette. I use the uh, Masterson stay weight palette. And what you can see there is I treated it. I, I boil water actually, instead of putting it in a microwave, which is very big for a microwave, I boil water. I use the sponge that's coming, that comes with the Masterson stay weight palette and the paper. And the paper is soaked about five minutes in boiling water. And then I add the, um, the little uh, sponge that comes with it, um, then the wet paper, and I drain it. Um, I have been using uh, this particular disposable paper palette on top of it, although this 
palette paper is supposed to be good for mixing, what I realized is that after a few times I use it, the plastic from the acrylic does not allow any more of the quality of the paper to stay moist and you need to get rid of it. I paint very quickly and I like to paint a lot. So if I use this uh, disposable paper palette, I actually uh, reuse it many times. And with a a towel, a paper towel, I make sure that I stretch it very well on top of the stay away palette. And that's the one I use for mixing. After a while, when uh, when I cannot use it anymore, I just get rid of the disposal paper pa- palette and I continue to use uh, the stay wet palette from the master sun for continuing to paint. The way that I position my paints for this particular painting uh, was using the golden heavy body acrylics. I like to stay with golden. I already know the shades and the hues from their materials. I haven't tried others, but I'm sure that um, I mean, you can mix different brands and you can choose the brand that you prefer. I position a lizard and crimson on the left, ultramarine blue in the middle, and the Indian yellow, which is a very nice transparent yellow that I have been using instead of yellow ochre on the right. Finally, titanium white. And what you see on the on the right is a little bit of a smudge of this four colors in there from the pal from the palette knife when I cleaned it up. So your your paints will stay wet as long as you stay in the margins outside the disposable paper palette that I used only for the mixing of my paints. But then I can actually store it and they really have lasted over a month with no problem, just uh, spraying a little bit of water before you close it up. In addition, I used uh, two brushes for this painting, a size seven flat and a size two tongs cat. Um, I could have used a round, but I had that on hand. I also used this palette knife, which is a round edge for uh, getting my paints out from my my uh, little tubes and putting them there because because I use sort of jars for paints. And of course, paper towels, plenty of paper towels. In addition, what you see there in the little yogurt cups is water. I use it only to clean the brushes when I need to move from one Uh, paint mix to another. But I do want to mention that I have been actually using the Floetrol. Um, I did a little bit of a search. Uh, You can use any other kind of media, but since I have been using this as medium to dilute my paints and painting, the painting really comes out much nicer than when you use water. And also people who know about it say that if you actually use water to dilute your paints, uh, the acrylics, uh, the binder is very diluted and it won't stay uh, as, as well. It can crackle and it can actually detach from the canvas. Uh, so what I like is that when I use this Floetrol, which actually feels almost like, um, I think it is probably, uh, like a glue, uh, it actually gives a very nice creamy buttery feeling to the, to the paints. And it also makes them stay a little bit more open. Uh, in, in other words, uh, a little bit more like oils when you are painting a la prima. In addition to the uh, regular color palette that I have and the two brushes that were my main brushes, I also used the Pro White Creative Mark uh, brushes. I really like them. Um, They come very white and it doesn't matter how well I clean them after each each, uh, session with water. Um, The Alizarin Crimson and the Thalo Blue especially um, remain in the bristles, but they maintain the size very nicely. I used a filbert size 10, a um, flat size 8, and a very nice flat size 2 that also has long bristles. And, and it's, it's actually very soft, it's synthetic, and it allows me not to pay much attention to details. It, it sort of does whatever it wants to do, and it avoids me from going on the very uh, 
very small details with any of my paintings. So I really like the, the way that the brush strokes come out with these brushes. And also, in addition to, uh, to these uh, three brushes, I added some colors to my palette at the very end. I added the Burnt Sienna for a warmer, darker color because I only had a cool dark, which was the ultramarine blue. And although with a Lizard and Crimson Viz, a very nice violet, for some of the areas, I needed the Burnt Sienna. And I also added some Thalo Blue for some of the brighter areas in, in this particular painting. They were all golden heavy body acrylics. The canvas that I used is Senso. I've been using linen canvas. Uh, it was after watching several YouTube videos from both uh, Jessica Henry and uh, Dr. Suvar Bibkov. Both of them have wonderful uh, YouTube demos and they've been working on linen canvas so I started working on linen and I really liked it. This particular Senso is also a toned canvas as you can see it comes already primed and it does have a warmer toned color. So I did use the Floetrol as medium for the paint instead of diluting them with water so that the binder is not very diluted. And it does give it a very creamy feeling when you paint. I really like it, especially on the linen canvas. This was my studio setup. I did uh, bring the photo, the reference photo back uh, from Amsterdam. And I did set up at the beginning, I don't look at the photo. I do look at my sketch because the sketch is what gave me the key elements uh, of the uh, of the uh, drawing and the positioning of the buildings and the shapes. So you can see uh, the studio setup. I have the sketch uh, very close to my eye level when I'm going to be painting. So on the very first uh, block in, I used a very thin layer of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. That helped me establish the darkest darks and also the perspective lines and how I was going to be positioning uh, in general all the shapes. I did use a little bit of white uh, to mix some of the gray colors where I added all my three basic uh, colors of the palette, the alizarin crimson, the Indian yellow, and the ultramarine blue to start positioning a bit uh, the clouds on the sky. To continue on the block in, I use this Indian yellow with a different amount of alizarin and crimson and a little bit of titanium white in some of these areas. So you can see it's um, using very transparent colors, which I really like for the first block in. So all three colors are very transparent and the Indian yellow gives a very nice bright uh, color for this kind of block in. And as you can see, mixed with a little bit of alizarin crimson or even with a little bit of ultramarine blue for the greens, it, it continues to be a very transparent layer for the beginning of the painting. Um, I established the areas around the main building, which are the other two buildings, especially paying attention to the sizes and the perspective lines. Now, the important thing to me was the key focal area was what caught my attention, which was the shape, the rhomboid shape of the building and the uh, reflection. So I wanted to make sure from the beginning I had placed those in the first block in stage. I added a little bit of the local color to the water using a lot of uh, titanium white and a mix of ultramarine blue and uh, the uh, Indian yellow. And then I started working more on the details. Now, the important thing is that the details are really not done with a fine brush. As you saw, the sizes of my brushes are generally large. And it's just dabs of color. <coughs> important thing is contrasting the tonal um, um, values 
and using few brush strokes and it gives the impression of windows or ledges and gives the impression of uh, more of a shade than I really had in this very overcast day. So I used, you know, the these uh, details for the original placing of the windows and the ledges on the roof and also on the building to the right. Uh, it's just very minor brush strokes, but it does start shaping up as a building. I did also start uh, putting the station wagon, which was in the shade. It was a white station wagon, but it does provide a little sense of perspective and size. So I thought it was good to put it in there. And of course, you know, the canal wall. In general, the canal wall, um, you know, had to be uh, started with a little bit more definition especially to make sure that the perspective lines worked to give the sense of the uh, view that we are having of this image. Uh, the boat was one of the things that I started very uh, loosely sketching from the beginning and basically stayed with the same size all the time. It is a bit larger than it should have been, uh, but I didn't want to change it. At the end, I think it worked okay. I also, uh, as I mentioned, the railing to me was important because it's sort of a way into the picture. And I started positioning the railing and working on the local colors of the railing. And this next step, uh, I resized the building. I realized that it was too small uh, originally, and also its reflection was not getting to the railing at the same level as I was seeing it from the reference photo. Um, I also had to extend it a little bit to the back. And now when I had in the blocking stage all purple, I had started adding a little bit more of the uh, the little bit of uh, blue with white and a lizard and crimson for the roof. And again, the size of this rhomboid really was, should have been using up as it is now, most of the vertical um, size of the canvas. For the local color of the, of the roof, I actually did use ultramarine blue, with a little bit of uh, yellow and white. I did neutralize it with different amounts of alizarin crimson. These are my, my four main colors. And these are the ones that I've been using for all the different uh, combinations that you see here is just different amounts of them. And sometimes I do make the piles ahead of time, but that's rarely the case. I usually do it as I'm working on a particular area and I don't mix that many that much amount of color I do it little by little so that gives also not only a little bit of unity throughout the painting but also a little bit of variation so the blues are not exactly the same all the time uh, I also added a bit more of the greens into the scene where it was violet uh, before I started adding where the greens had to go, positioning them. And especially I realized that the reflection of the water was very mainly, you know, green and brownish. It was not very blue. Then I did work a bit more on the details. Again, with a few brush strokes, working a bit more on the turret and the roofs. Um, it's just a very broad brush strokes. And the clear color is uh, a lot of Indian yellow with um, with ultramarine blue, a little bit of the alizarin crimson and titanium white for the darker areas and for the lighter areas is uh, more of the uh, Indian yellow with alizarin crimson and white. I did maintain some of the original violets. Uh, they were sort of happy accident as is known um, because Originally, the whole shape was violet, but uh, even though in the original picture, there was no clear shade because it was an overcast day, I thought it would be good to keep it and give the impression of this uh, balcony and uh, the, the um, 
windows or the first floor looking with that particular shade. So I did leave some of these violet shades to help me establish the structure of the building. Uh, again, the accents are done with a very mellow Indian yellow and white, a little bit of alizarin crimson, especially in the areas where there's less light um, eh, or the areas that are bright, but they're in the shade of the building. I decided the light was going to come from the right. Um, I did enlarge the wagon and I did correct uh, the sense of the buildings that are to the right of the main building. On this next step, I worked a bit on the back of the building on the turret. Uh, it was too strong and I mellowed it down a little bit. I also worked a bit more on the main building's turret, on the colors and shapes to give it the impression of it being round. Um, and again, the back building, I worked with many layers, making it lighter and lighter all the time. The acrylic paints uh, dry, uh, darker so sometimes I forget and I have to add more lighter colors on top. That's okay. I did darken the reflections on the water. I realized that they were too light and they had to be darker and they had to be greener. Um, I did work on the colors of the water. So what I did was in, in this I started using the thalo blue and also the burnt sienna for the warmer tones that I was seeing on the water for the areas that were dark. And in addition, I worked a bit more on the sky. It was, it was not, uh, you know, was just the first uh, pass was very sketchy, but I wanted to decrease the amount of clouds that I had painted. And I started working also with negative painting, defining that tree. And that's pretty much the way that it looks in the final version. On the railing, I wanted to make the idea that it had some round edges, although the original didn't, and it was very rusty. Um, I thought this uh, it was interesting to use this kind of a bluish uh, color, violet color, using basically ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and different amounts of white, and give the impression of a very smooth and a little curved railing. On this next uh, step, what I did was to work a bit more on the water reflections. And the first thing that I realized is that the building reflection originally was too triangular and I had to widen it, especially looking also at my reference photo. I also realized that it was greener. I had to forget that it's water and I have to see exactly what gives the impression of this reflection. And it was much greener than I had originally used it. So using a mix of the ultramarine blue and Indian yellow, I added some burnt umber. This is where you can see they, they had darker gr olive green shades, but they were also warmer. So some of these uh, reflections on the water on top of the very dark underneath are starting to give the impression of really reflective water and transparency to, to the uh, reflections. Um, the thalo blue and titanium white were also used with uh, a mix of the other three. I mean, really, I was not using just the uh, ultramarine blue, but the same mix as I had, I would just add a little bit of Thalo blue and, and titanium white, or a little bit more of the uh, yellow in the different areas of the water to create these effects that I was seeing. But there was a really very little blue. The important thing was to use broad strokes and avoid blending on the water. I realized that what I was seeing was really uh, layers and layers of different colors, and they were not blended. So the light areas of the water and the brush strokes had to be applied in many different layers. The good thing is acrylics dry fast, but with the Floetrol, they tend to stay open a little longer. So just move on to a different area of the painting until it dries. 
the accents on the canal wall, uh, I wanted to make them uh, a little bit more because in the photo it's overcast, but I had decided to put the light source on the right and I wanted to make that upper ledge a bit more visible. Same as a little bit of accents on the shrubs and the top of the shrubs that are growing on the canal wall. So in the final details of the painting, uh, what I actually focused on was the shaded of the boat and its reflection. The boat was too bright, too yellow, and I shaded it a bit more, uh, adding, it's unusual to add the violets on top of the, um, of the whitish one, but it did work uh, well. And the reflection is darker than the boat. So I did work on that boat a bit better. And also the reflections that I had before were not really working very well. So I made sure that I was using the building as a reference for where the reflections of the building are coming, especially the, the light uh, lines that I was seeing uh, on their reflections. I made more accents with uh, the uh, the water reflections with these burnt umber and yellow and white to make uh, the impression of transparency. So adding some of these uh, sort of uh, grayish uh, mud color to the bright colors underneath is starting to give that impression of the water reflection. Uh, I did adjust the values on the water. It was too light, uh, closer to the wall, and I realized it had to be darker and less defined. And finally, I did work on the final shape of the support beam for that railing, which was not looking very vertical to me. It was actually weird, but I worked on it again, thinking that if the light was coming from the left, it, it would have a little bit of an accent there. And this is the final version of the painting. Thank you for listening and watching this video. You can watch more videos in my YouTube channel. And if you like it, please subscribe and like the videos as you are watching them. Thank you very much.